Good morning. It is good to see all of you here. We have people in the sanctuary. We have people who are joining us on Zoom. And we have our congregation that will be joining us on Facebook starting tomorrow. So welcome to everyone. It is good to be together. And a special thanks to Susan and our banner wavers, Ruth and Jim. Uh, thank you for helping us to embody the movement of the Holy Spirit, which will be our theme for worship this morning. If you are here in the sanctuary, we do find that sometimes we have a little bit of feedback if we have cell phones that are on. So if you have a cell phone and it can be turned off, it would be great if that um, was possible. And um, just a reminder that we are recording so that we'll be able to post our worship on Facebook for those who cannot gather in person or on Zoom. And then I just want to remind you again uh, that we are in the middle of a pandemic, and so just a word about safety. Um, thank you for, if you're here in person, keeping your masks on and distance from each other. If you are speaking during the prayer time, something like that, uh, or as liturgist, Ruth and I will have our masks off when we're speaking, and that is fine. But otherwise, we'd ask that you keep your mask on and refrain from singing in the sanctuary. And... Uh, if you happen to notice any children, we do have some fun activities for children in the friendship room if they are joining us. So I think with that, we are ready for Janet to lead us in our opening prayer. Holy Spirit, love divine, breathe, us on, breathe on us. Holy Spirit, that we may be fully present to receive your message for us today. Act in us, that we may extend your love to all we meet this week. Open our hearts, that, may we, that we may receive all our blessings with gratitude. Strengthen us, so that we may defend all that is just. Protect us as we seek to protect those most vulnerable among us. Speak for us when we cannot find the words to express our deepest needs. In Jesus' name, amen. and you would like to, we would invite you to stand as we read together the call to worship. I'll read the not bold words and Ruth, our liturgist, will lead you in the bold words. When we need new ideas, Spirit of God, stir in us. When we have ceased to imagine, Spirit of God, stir in us. When we have settled complacently, Spirit of God, stir in us. When we dare to dream, Spirit of God, stir in us. Our opening hymn is number 333 in the United Methodist Hymnal. And just have a couple of uh, words of introduction about that. And um, this is Susan. She's going to lead us in arm and hand motion. So even though we're not singing, we can participate with our bodies. And um, so everyone in the sanctuary, as well as on Zoom, are invited to follow along, and you can sit or stand as it suits you.
Hebrew scripture that reading for today is from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 3 through 14. Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in the statutes of his father David only, he sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. Recording in progress. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you, and you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life.
Our epistle reading today is from Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A beginning windsurfer tells the story of his first family vacation to a large lake with his new equipment. He got the board out on the beach and stood up on it and lifted that sail and the wind caught in the sail and he was off. He was amazed at how easy it seemed and the speed with which the wind carried him. It almost seemed effortless as he crossed the lake. And as he got farther and farther from shore, his confidence increased and he started to imagine his return trip when his family would be so impressed with how he had handled the adventure. He reached the other side of the lake and decided to rest on the beach for a while and enjoy the peace and quiet until he got hungry and thought maybe it was time to head back. So he did the same thing as before, set out from the shore on top of his board, raised that sail and caught the wind. But this time, instead of being able to take a direct path across the water right back to where he started, the wind caught his sail in a different way, flipped the board over and landed him in the lake. Well, he thought that was some bad luck, but he was still very confident in his abilities and he got back on that board and tried the same thing again and had the same result. Now tired and hungry, he was starting to get frustrated. He couldn't keep that board moving in the right direction and stay right side up. He could only go in a diagonal across the lake rather than straight back to his family. So over several hours, he had many diagonals back and forth across that lake and finally made it back to his family. This beginning windsurfer's name was Alan Roxburgh and he later wrote about his experience in a book called The Missional Leader with his co-author Fred Romanek. In the book, they write about how Alan's experience windsurfing is much like the experience of those who seek to follow the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the wind is at our back and we feel like we have the opportunity to experience something that is effortless. And then other times, we end up traveling many more miles than the journey would take if we could just go directly. We move when we can and we change course frequently We take counterintuitive steps that are guided by the direction that the winds of the spirit lead rather than by what we think or want. This week, as Ruth read, our ancient letter writer who wrote the book of Ephesians tells us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If Roxburgh and Romanach are correct and the Holy Spirit is as fickle as the winds across a lake, We might argue with the author of Ephesians and think if, maybe only to ourselves, surely there are better ways to discern our path in life. If the Holy Spirit is going to blow us back and forth and not let us get where we need to go, why would we want to be filled with that? Yet, I think that if we are honest and open about the ways that the Holy Spirit has already been moving in our lives and in our church up till now, we'll see that the experience has been both life-giving and more like Alan's trip back across the lake for dinner than his initial expedition away from family camp. When I look around here at Holler Lake United Methodist Church for spirit sightings, I find plenty. To start, I have found that there are ways that the Holy Spirit moved among you and in me before July 1 to prepare us for our time together. To be sure, there were twists and turns along that route, but I believe that the Holy Spirit came before me and before you too, and will be here after me, after all of us. I hear whispers of the Holy Spirit's voice in the conversations that we are having about how we welcome people, about how we use our buildings and property 
about the format and mode of worship, about structures for leadership, about new ministries that might begin and previous ministries which served this community in other times, about visiting beloved elders and grieving loved ones who have passed. The Holy Spirit is part of these conversations, guiding us, never forcing us, and seldom going anywhere very directly. The Holy Spirit we might know best as the third person of the Trinity, one of the three ways that our triune God make God's self known to us, the sustainer part of creator, redeemer, and sustainer that we hear so often. The Holy Spirit of our Christian scriptures, as well as the songs and prayers that are based on the Holy Spirit, is actually based on three traditions from the Hebrew scriptures and the writings about the Hebrew scriptures. First, we can trace the Holy Spirit back all the way to the creation story in Genesis and the Hebrew word ruach. Ruach means breath. God breathed God's spirit or ruach over the deep to breathe life into the world. The Holy Spirit of God moves on the wind, bringing forth life. Second, our understanding of the Holy Spirit can be traced to the Hebrew word Shekinah, or the presence of God. Shekinah is thought to be God's indwelling connection to the people, like in the tabernacle when the Israelites were in the desert, or in the temple once they were more settled. The Holy Spirit dwells with us and doesn't leave us. And third, we can trace a connection to the Holy Spirit from the Greek word Sophia, meaning wisdom. The Holy Spirit has wisdom for us that can guide us in uncertain times. These three traditions inform our ideas, our expectations, and our experiences of the Holy Spirit, the breath of life, an indwelling presence, and wisdom for uncertain times. There's a family that lives next door to us here at the church, and there are several children in this family. One day, when I was in my office, I saw the grandma and two of the grandkids playing in the backyard, and I went over to say hello and get acquainted. We had a nice chat, and then a third child came out from the house, clearly upset. The grandma talked with her and calmed her as best she could. And at first, it kind of seemed like my presence might be making her more upset, who was the stranger in the backyard when she was clearly needing her grandma. I considered leaving, but eventually the child convinced her grandma that she was going to play with the other two kids, and that lasted all of a few minutes. Then the child came back to us and asked who I was and why I was there. After some explanation, we turned and looked at the church and I pointed at my window up on the wall. I said that if it was okay with her grandma that maybe she could come and see my office sometime. She seemed a little bit interested and so she went off to change her clothes. Then she was ready to explore. Grandma said it was fine and there was plenty of supervision in the building so we came over. We got her signed in at the front door and we found a puzzle that we could put together. We waved at grandma out the window and then we went back. I'm telling this story because I think it's an example of another place where I've seen evidence of the Holy Spirit blowing in our church through our relationships with our neighborhood. I could never have predicted or moved directly to putting together a puzzle with that child when I set off to work that day. Didn't know it was going to happen. But somehow the Holy Spirit moved and my direction changed. Even when I first met the child, my initial response was that maybe I should leave. But somehow, something shifted and the path forward became different. Now maybe you've had this kind of experience playing with youngsters in your family. Their mood or instant interests can change on a dime. It's not always the Holy Spirit that changes it, to be sure. So it's up to us to continue to discern where the Holy Spirit is moving. With people, in life, in church, we have to come to an awareness of how we can change or adapt or flow or move with the Holy Spirit, hopefully like that child that I met that day. We have to be able to tell where the Holy Spirit is guiding. So this is a little bit like what King Solomon was asking of God in the reading from 1 Kings this morning. King Solomon is the third king of the people of Israel, after David his father, their second king. After the Israelites settled in the Promised Land, they lived with various forms of government for a while. And they watched the other people around them who had kings, 
and they asked God for a king like the others. The first king, Saul, was killed in battle, and then eventually David was anointed the second king by the prophet Samuel. David went on to have sons with multiple wives, and Solomon was one of the youngest sons. He was the one that became king after David. The passage that we heard this morning reports Solomon's desire to be, give, to be granted the gift of discernment for ruling God's people and God's affirmation granting his request. Now, Solomon was by no means a perfect king. He hoarded resources, and later in life he forcibly kept harems for himself. Some people would even trace the ruin of the kingdom of Judah to Solomon's excesses. Yet the excerpt of his story that we heard this morning may illustrate for us some wisdom from King Solomon's approach, even if we read it with some trepidation given where his story is going after the excerpt we heard today. His desire for discernment as a gift from God may be our desire as well. And if this is the case, that we also desire the gift of discernment, we will need to cultivate it. If we desire the leading of the Holy Spirit in these uncertain times, we will need to learn to listen for it. If we desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit, as the author of Ephesians suggests, we will need to let the Holy Spirit grow in us. To begin us on that path, I'll suggest a process that's part of a larger study. And that study might be something that we eventually want to do together over an extended period of time using a guide called the Way of Discernment. But for now, we can all practice one set of prompts. Or maybe you'll decide that just one of the prompts is enough for your devotions this week. It starts with an intention. An intention to want what God wants. When we begin our search for guidance from the Holy Spirit, like Alan on his windsurfing board, we can't begin with our intention for where we're going. We must begin by letting go of our desires and wants. If we think we want a new job, we have to let go of our expectations for what that job will be if we want the Holy Spirit to guide us. If we want a full church, we have to let go of the ways that we used to fill the church in the past and let the Holy Spirit raise the new questions. If we want to be led by the Holy Spirit, we have to begin by setting the intention to let God's desires be our desires. Next, we invite God to raise up the question for discernment from within us. So often, once we can say what the question is, then the answer seems more clear. But if I frame the question myself, I can bias what the answer should be. But if I let go of my question and let God plant the question in me, then I'll have to be patient. I'll have to be willing to accept non-closure. I'll have to set aside my need for control. And what I may find is that God's question holds a nugget of the answer in it once I can hear it differently. Then we live with the question patiently, repeating it throughout our lives. This part is really hard. It means that I can't force a choice. I have to explore the effects of this question on others in conversation. I have to let that question affect how I approach all the rest of my life. I think about the pro-con list that I see people make on TV and I think this is like a pro-con list on steroids or maybe in 3D. It's not just about the pros and cons of one question but about the pros and cons of my whole life as affected by this question. So then, once we have identified the question that is raising up from within us and we have explored how that question lives within our lives, then we listen. We listen with all that we have. We listen not just with our ears. We can listen through scripture and prayer, song and movement. We can engage creatively with art supplies to let images and patterns represent in our uh, creative expressions. We can listen with our whole bodies. We may come to associate our heart rate quickening with energy that we could feel prompted by the Holy Spirit, either in support of or in opposition to a new possibility. 
Maybe we would come to know our fidgeting or our headaches or our desire for a nap with the ways that the Holy Spirit is inviting recognition of our reactions to some new opportunity. We can think of our entire body as an instrument tuned to the movement of the Holy Spirit. Like Alan's body told him about the movement of the wind by flipping him into the water, our bodies tell us much about the movement of the Holy Spirit. Then, we want to be noticing as we're listening how perception may change as we listen. Maybe we'll start to hear the question in a new light or realize another option. Maybe there will be a word that is spoken to us through scripture or through the voice of someone else that helps us find new meaning or insight. But eventually we'll start to understand more clearly what might be emerging. And finally, a new approach will present itself. The winds will have shifted and we will swing our sail around to catch in a new diagonal, possibly moving in a direction we didn't think we needed to go. This process is so counterintuitive for us. We in Western culture are used to making things happen. We look for decisive leadership and we think that good judgment is like an automatic habit that we either have or we don't have. What we learn from the Holy Spirit traditions of knowing the breath of life in us, of sensing the indwelling presence of God in us, and of seeking God's wisdom for us is that God will lead us. What we learn from the processes for discerning the Holy Spirit's movement in our life is that we have to make ourselves available over time in order to become decisive spirit-led leaders. We need to listen hard, sometimes slowly, and often with more than just our ears, to to develop the gifts that King Solomon asked to receive from God. Our leadership board here at church is beginning on a process of discerning what our priorities will be in this first year together. I hope that everyone in the church will be in conversation with our leaders so that we can together discern ways forward led by the Holy Spirit. We won't rush into new things, but we will seek to move when the Spirit is moving. And I hope you'll be part of the discernment that will lead us into our next chapters. In addition to the church processes of discernment, I know many of us are feeling uncertain about other things as well. The news this morning from Afghanistan has left me feeling uncertain I know people who are among the troops that are currently being deployed there, and I ask for the Holy Spirit to move in them and their leaders. This week, also, our county went back into the very high risk level for contracting COVID-19 and its variants based on the number of cases reported daily. This is true even though we have a high vaccination rate, and there are more cases being reported in all the other counties around here than in King County yet still our risk level is rated as very high. And I have questions about that and about how we should respond. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will move so that we can find the right response. This week also, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the UN body for assessing science related to a changing climate, issued its sixth report and assessed that we have passed the time when a one and a half degree increase in average global surface temperatures could have been avoided, but that a two degree increase is still avoidable. They said that the temperatures and the effects of them will continue to accelerate for many years, but if we act now, that the worst of the extinctions, fires, and floods can be avoided. Another example where it's confusing and we are called to discern a faithful path forward where the people of God can allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in preventive responses, in advocacy for justice, and in compassion for those who are most affected. This list could go on and on. We live in a confusing time when even the questions we must ask aren't clear. And such a time as this is just the time for the Holy Spirit to lead, to turn to the discernment practices that we know and the ones that we're learning so that we can move with the Spirit. Sometimes moving with the Spirit can lead us in surprising ways, 
Often it will lead us in counterintuitive, exhausting, and maybe difficult ways. Ours is a time when we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit and when we can celebrate that that guidance is promised to us. May we also celebrate that this is a time when we can be filled with the Holy Spirit as we are promised in our scriptures. Amen. And let us continue in an attitude of prayer. We'll pray this morning with a breath prayer as we inhale and exhale to remind us that the Holy Spirit is also praying with us. As we inhale, I invite you to pray the words, Holy Spirit, and then as we exhale, I will move through a series of reminders about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, breathe in us. Holy Spirit, dwell with us. Holy Spirit, grant us wisdom. Holy Spirit, fill us with your movement. This day we especially ask, Holy Spirit, for your movement and your wisdom in Haiti, after the earthquake this weekend and the tropical storm that is threatening after continued political unrest. We ask for your presence among the people of Afghanistan that they might be kept safely and that their rights might be preserved during the political turmoil and fighting in their cities. And we ask as well for wisdom for our leaders during this time of increased COVID cases, limited hospital beds, and care for all patients in the hospital being affected by those who are needing care for COVID. We continue our prayer this morning by praying together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we come to the point in our service where we note that there are so many ways that we are offering of ourselves into the community, that the body of Christ can offer prayers and presence and witness and service into the world. And this morning, if this is the day that you would like to offer financially to your church for that work, there are three ways that you can do that. One is on our website through the PayPal link. You may have also received it in the newsletter. The second way is by sending a check to our secure mailing address here at the church. And the third, if you are here in person, is that there is an offering plate at the door that you can leave a gift in as you exit this morning.
Holy God, we are truly grateful for the many gifts you have given us, some that we didn't even recognize as your gift to us in our day-to-day -day joys and sufferings. We pray that you accept this day our gifts in return. We know you find more joy in the work of our hands and the love of others in our hearts than the money we place on the altar. Help us to be always willing to share with others the abundance of your love through these gifts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Uh, if you are here in the sanctuary, I think that you have a flag to wave. So if you could find your flag, that would be great. And if you are at home, I invite you to find a scarf or a handkerchief or a napkin to wave, or even your arms. And may the Holy Spirit move us all to move during this song as Susan leads us. Again, you may stand or sit. prepare to go forth from here. May the Spirit of God go before you, preparing the way and making plans for your arrival. May the Spirit of God be with you, moving in you, leading, guiding, and directing you. And may the Spirit of God be ever at your back, filling your sails and propelling you in new, surprising, yet fruitful ways. Amen. Amen.